in our daily lives, body language is omnipresent and plays a crucial role in interpersonal communication. Imagine how do you gauge whether someone you're meeting for the first time is interested in you? Or during a tense job interview, how can you tell if you're making a positive impression on the interviewer? Or in conversations with a partner, how can you detect the real emotions that words fail to convey? These everyday questions highlight the importance and challenges of webbing body language. Body language, including our posture, gestures, facial expressions, and eye contact, conveys powerful messages without uttering a word. Understanding and mastering this silent language can make us more confident in social interactions, enable us to express ourselves more effectively, and allow us to accurately interpret others' intentions and feelings. This video aims to delve into the power of body language, helping you to leverage non-verbal cues across various contexts, whether in professional exchanges, social settings, or personal relationships. Through this series, we will unlock the secrets of body language step by step, making you more adept at navigating any communicative situation and becoming a more effective communicator. Number 1. Decoding Basic Gestures The Foundation of Nonverbal Communication at the core of nonverbal communication lies the art of decoding basic gestures, a skill that can significantly enhance our understanding of others and improve our interpersonal interactions. From a nod of the head to the crossing of arms, each gesture we make is a piece of the complex puzzle of human communication. By learning to interpret these silent messages, we can gain insights into people's feelings, intentions, and even their truthfulness. Consider the simple act of nodding, universally recognized as a sign of agreement or approval. Yet the speed and intensity of the nod can add layers to its meaning. Slow, deliberate nod may convey strong agreement or thoughtful acknowledgement, whereas rapid nodding might indicate eagerness or, in some cases, impatience. On the other hand, crossed arms are often interpreted as a defensive stance, signaling resistance or detachment. However, context is key. In a chilly room, crossed arms might simply mean someone is cold. Thus, it's crucial to consider the environment and the individual's baseline behavior before jumping to conclusions. Hand gestures also play a pivotal role in communication. Open palms can suggest honesty and openness, while pointing fingers may be perceived as aggressive or accusatory. The way we use our hands can either build a connection or create distance with our audience. Eye contact is another fundamental aspect of non-verbal communication. Maintaining eye contact demonstrates confidence and interest, fostering a sense of connection. Conversely, avoiding eye contact might suggest discomfort, disinterest, or even deceit, although cultural norms greatly influence its interpretation. Facial expressions are perhaps the most direct window into a person's emotions. A genuine smile involving the eyes and not just the mouth can convey warmth than friendliness, making others feel at ease. In contrast, a furrowed brow may indicate worry or confusion, prompting us to clarify our message or offer reassurance. Decoding basic gestures requires careful observation and an understanding that no single gesture tells the whole story. By paying attention to clusters of gestures and considering the context, we can become more adept at reading the unspoken language of the body. This skill not only aids in deciphering the messages of those around us, but also in becoming more aware of the signals we send, allowing us to communicate more effectively and empathetically. Number 2. Eye Movements and Meanings. Gaining Insight Without Words. Eye movements offer a fascinating window into the unspoken thoughts and emotions of those around us. These subtle shifts can reveal much about a person's internal state, intentions, and level of engagement, often without them even realizing it. By paying close attention to the eyes, we can gain insights that words alone might not convey, enhancing our ability to connect and communicate effectively. Rapid eye blinking, for instance, can indicate stress or discomfort. When someone blinks more frequently than usual during a conversation, it might suggest they're feeling anxious or under pressure. Conversely, prolonged eye contact 
often signals confidence, interest, or even attraction. It can create a powerful connection, fostering trust and openness between individuals. However, too much eye contact can feel intimidating or aggressive, highlighting the importance of balance and cultural sensitivity. Eye direction also plays a critical role in nonverbal communication. The common belief that looking to the left indicates lying, while looking to the right suggests truth-telling, has been widely debated. More reliably, the direction of someone's gaze can indicate their cognitive processes. Looking up and to the right might signal visual construction, imagining something new, whereas looking up and to the left may indicate visual recall, remembering a visual image. These movements can provide clues about whether a person is recalling an actual memory or creating a fabricated story. And moreover, the phenomenon of eye blocking, such as rubbing the eyes or looking away, can suggest a desire to avoid seeing or dealing with something unpleasant. It might indicate that the person is feeling overwhelmed, disbelieving, or even rejecting what they're hearing or experiencing. Pupil dilation is another subtle yet revealing aspect of eye movement. Pupils can dilate in response to emotional arousal interest or attraction, serving as an involuntary indicator of someone's feelings towards a person or subject matter. This reaction is uncontrollable, providing an honest glimpse into one's emotional state. Understanding the nuances of eye movements and meanings enhances our ability to empathize and connect with others on a deeper level. It allows us to pick up on unspoken cues and respond more effectively, fostering better communication and stronger relationships. By becoming more attuned to the eyes, we unlock a powerful tool for gaining insight without words, enriching our interactions and understanding of those around us. Number 3. Posture and Positioning. How they reflect confidence and attitude. Posture and positioning are like the unspoken heralds of our inner states broadcasting our confidence, attitudes, and even our intentions to the world without a single word. From the way we stand in a group to the manner in which we sit during a meeting, every stance or pose we adopt sends out a message, decipherable to those paying attention. A straight, upright posture is universally associated with confidence and self assurances it conveys a sense of authority and presence, compelling others to take notice and listen. When we stand tall with shoulders back and head held high, it's not just our spine that's aligned, our self-esteem gets a boost too. This posture not only affects how others perceive us, but can also influence our own psychological state, increasing feelings of positivity and power. Conversely, slouching or hutching over can communicate the opposite. It might suggest a lack of confidence, low energy, or a defensive attitude. In social situations, such a posture could deter people from approaching, as it signals disinterest or withdrawal. Interestingly, just as a confident posture can uplift our mood, adopting a slump position can lead to a decrease in energy and a more negative outlook. Positioning or how we orient ourselves in relation to others also plays a critical role in nonverbal communication. Leaning in slightly during a conversation can express interest and engagement signal that you are fully present and attentive. On the flip side, leaning or turning away might be perceived as disengagement or disinterest, potentially creating a barrier to effective communication. In professional settings, the way we position ourselves around a table can reflect our perceived role within the group. Sitting at the head of the table typically signifies leadership or a desire to take charge, while sitting along the sides might suggest a more collaborative or observant stance. Understanding and consciously managing our posture and positioning can have a profound impact on our interactions. By aligning our nonverbal cues with our intended message, we enhance ability to connect with others, convey confidence, and command respect. It's not just about making a good impression, it's about expressing our authentic selves and navigating social landscapes with ease and assurance. Number 4. Facial Expressions. The Window to Emotions and Thoughts. Facial expressions are the windows to our emotions and thoughts, offering a vivid glimpse into the unspoken. They can convey a wide range of feelings, from joy and surprise to sadness and anger, often revealing more than words could ever express. 
Mastering the art of reading these expressions can significantly enhance our understanding of others, enriching our interactions and connections. A smile, the universal sign of happiness, can light up a face and instantly make the environment more welcoming. However, not all smiles are created equal. Genuine smiles involve not just the muscles around the mouth, but also the eyes, resulting in the characteristic crow's feet that signify rude joy. In contrast a forced smile, using only the mouth's muscles, might indicate politeness or masking true feelings. Similarly, the furrowing of brows can indicate confusion or concentration, providing a cue that someone is deeply thinking or struggling to understand. Raised eyebrows, on the other hand, might signal surprise or disbelief, offering an immediate insight into a person's reaction to information or events. Anger and frustration might be evident through narrowed eyes and a tightened jaw signaling a need to approach conversations with care or perhaps give the person space. Detecting these signs early can help in navigating potentially volatile interactions more effectively. Beyond these basic emotions, subtler expressions can reveal complex states of mind. A quick flash of disgust might pass almost unnoticed, but indicates strong negative feelings towards something said or done. Similarly, a brief look of fear or anxiety might suggest underlying worries that haven't been voiced. Recognizing and responding to facial expressions requires not only careful observation, but also empathy. It's about understanding the context and the individual's baseline expressions to accurately interpret their emotions. For instance, some people might naturally have a more serious resting face, which should not be mistaken for unfriendlances or disinterest. Improving our ability to read facial expressions opens up new avenues for connection. It allows us to respond more appropriately to the needs and feelings of those around us, building stronger, more meaningful relationships. This skill is invaluable in both personal settings, enhancing communication and fostering an environment of mutual understanding and respect. Understanding facial expressions goes beyond mere recognition. It involves putting ourselves in the shoes of others, appreciating their experiences and emotions. As we become more attuned to the subtle signals conveyed by the face, we unlock communication, bridging gaps without words and nurturing connections that thrive on genuine understanding and compassion. Number 5. The Significance of Touch. Interpreting Contact and Distance. Touch, one of the most powerful forms of nonverbal communication, carries profound significance in human interactions. It can convey a spectrum of messages, from comfort and love to dominance, and a dominance and aggression, all without uttering a single word. The way we use touch, and the context in which it occurs, greatly influences how it's perceived and the emotions it evokes. A gentle pat on the back or a warm hug can express support, empathy or affection, fostering a sense of connection and trust between individuals. Such touches are universally recognized as signs of care and can significantly enhance the bond in personal and professional relationships alike. In contrast, an uninvited toxic contact can trigger discomfort, invasion of privacy or even distress underscoring the importance of consent of personal boundaries. The distance we maintain during interactions also speaks volumes. Proxemics, the study of personal space, highlights how physical closeness or distance can affect communication and relationship dynamics. Intimate distance, reserved for close relationships, allows for touch and denotes trust and personal connection. Social and public distances, on the other hand, are maintained in professional or formal settings where touch is minimal or non-existent, signifying a more formal or detached interaction. In professional settings, a firm handshake is often the acceptable form of touch, symbolizing respect and openness to engage. The strength, duration and a contact accompanying the handshake can further refine the message from confidence and warmth to aggression and dominance. Understanding and respecting cultural norms is crucial when it comes to touch. Different cultures have varying norms regarding what is considered appropriate contact, with some valuing touch as an essential part of communication and others viewing it as something to be used sparingly and with caution. Becoming adept at interpreting the nuances of touch and respecting personal and cultural boundaries can greatly enhance interpersonal interactions.
It allows us to communicate more effectively, showing empathy, respect, and understanding without the need for words. By being mindful of the context and the other person's comfort levels, we can use stuff to build bridges, heal, and strengthen bonds, making our nonverbal communication as powerful and meaningful as our verbal exchanges. Navigating the delicate balance of touch and distance requires sensitivity and awareness. It's about reading the situation and the people involved, understanding their preferences and comfort zones. As we become more attuned to these subtle cues, our ability to connect with others on a deeper level grows, enriching our relationships and enhancing our communicative competence. And number six, space and territory. Understanding personal and social zones. Space and territory play crucial roles in how we interact and communicate with others, serving as invisible boundaries that dictate comfort levels, privacy, and even power dynamics. Edward T. Hall's concept of proxemics, the study of spatial requirements of humans, and the effects of population density or behavior, communication, and social interaction, offers insightful perspectives into understanding personal and social zones. Personal space refers to the invisible bubble we carry around us, an area with invisible boundaries into which others cannot intrude without feeling discomfort or threat. This space varies significantly among individuals based on cultural backgrounds, personal preferences, and the relationship between the people involved. Hall identified for distinct zones within personal space, intimate, personal, social, and public. Intimate space Reserved for close friends, family, and for intimate interactions, this fan extends up to 18 inches from the individual. Encroachment by strangers into this space can feel threatening or uncomfortable. Personal space. Extending from 18 inches to about 4 feet, this zone is where conversations with friends and acquaintances occur. It allows for personal interaction without the sense of intimacy that comes with closer distance. Social space. Ranging from foot to 12 feet, social space is used for interactions among acquaintances or in professional settings. It maintains a level of formality and is where most business one's actions occur. Public space. Beyond 12 feet, public space is considered impersonal and is where individuals relate to others as members of the public or within large groups. Understanding and respecting these zones can greatly enhance communication and social interactions. For instance, a person stepping too close in a culture that values personal space highly might be seen as aggressive or disrespectful, while maintaining too much distance in a culture that values closeness could be interpreted as cold or detached. Moreover, the concept of territoriality, which refers to the innate or learned tendency to own space, influences interactions as well. People exhibit territorial behavior to claim ownership of space or objects, often through markers, decoration, or placement of personal items. In shared spaces, like offices, understanding territorial signals can prevent conflicts and foster a respectful environment. Navigating space and territory effectively requires a keen sense of observation, cultural sensitivity, and adaptability. By being mindful of the unspoken rules governing personal and social zones, we can avoid misunderstandings and build stronger, more respectful relationships. Whether in personal interactions, professional environments or cross-cultural encounters, an awareness of space and territory enhances our ability to communicate effectively, showing respect for others' comfort and boundaries. Number 7. Nearing and Synchrony. Building Rapport and Connection. Mirroring and synchrony are fascinating aspects of non-verbal communication that play a pivotal role in building rapport and fostering connections between individuals. Mirroring refers to the subconscious imitation of another person's body language, gestures, speech patterns, or attitudes. Synchrony, on the other hand, involves two or more people moving in the same rhythm or pattern, often occurring naturally in conversation when individuals are in harmony with each other. These phenomena are grounded in the human brain's mirror neuron system, which is believed to be responsible for empathy, understanding, and social bonding. When we mirror someone's behavior, we're essentially saying, I'm like you, which can create a sense of affinity and trust. This nonverbal cue signals to the other person that we are on the same wavelength, 
making communication smoother and more effective. In professional settings, mirroring can be a powerful tool for negotiation and leadership. By subtly mimicking the body language of a colleague or client, you can create an environment of mutual understanding and respect. It's important, however, to be genuine and subtle in these efforts. Overt or forced mirroring can come across as manipulative or insincere. Synchrony extends beyond mere imitation to encompass a shared tempo or rhythm in interactions. It can be as simple as walking in step with someone or as complex as finishing each other's sentences in a conversation. This natural synchronization fosters a sense of unity and cooperation, enhancing team dynamics and personal relationships alike. Developing the skill to engage in mirroring and synchrony effectively requires observation, empathy and practice. Paying attention to the body language and verbal cues of others allows you to adjust your behavior in a way that aligns with theirs, promoting a positive and collaborative interaction. Additionally, being mindful of cultural differences is crucial, as norms regarding personal space, eye contact, and gestures can vary widely across cultures. By harnessing the power of mirroring and synchrony, we can enhance our interpersonal skills, deepen connections, and navigate social interactions more gratefully. These subtle yet powerful forms of nonverbal communication offer a pathway to better understanding empathy and rapport enriching both our personal and professional worries. Number 8. Detecting Deception. Tips to Spot Lies and Half-Truths. Detecting deception is a complex yet intriguing aspect of human communication, blending psychology, observation, and intuition. While no single sign conclusively indicates deceit, a combination of verbal and non-verbal cues can suggest that someone may not be telling the whole truth. Understanding these signals can enhance our ability to navigate conversations, negotiations, and relationships with a more discerning eye. One key indicator of potential deception is inconsistency between verbal and non-verbal communication. For example, someone might verbally express agreement, but their body language gushes crossed arms, averted gaze, or fidget signs suggest discomfort or disagreement. These discrepancies can signal that the person's words and true feelings are not aligned. Microsphere secanes, fleeting facial expressions that occur in a fraction of a second, can also reveal hidden emotions. These involuntary expressions can contradict the emotions someone is trying to convey, offering a glimpse into their genuine feelings. For instance, a flash of anger on someone's face when they're trying to appear calm might indicate underlying hostility or deceit. Changes in speech patterns provide another clue. When lying, some people may speak more slowly as they try to fabricate a story, while others might speed up due to nervousness. A sudden increase in filler words like karma or you know can also suggest cognitive low, as the brain works harder to maintain a deception. Physical cues such as avoiding eye contact or excessive blinking can sometimes indicate dishonesty. However, it's important to remember that these signs can also stem from nervousness or shyness. Therefore, they should not be taken as definitive proof of lying without considering the context and the individual's baseline behavior. Asking for details and observing how someone responds can be revealing. Liars often struggle to provide detailed accounts of events, and their stories may lack coherence or change over time. Conversely, truth-tellers are generally more consistent in their narratives and more willing to admit when they don't remember something. Detecting deception is as much an art as it is a science, requiring careful observation, empathy, and an understanding of human behavior. While no method is foolproof, becoming attuned to the subtle signs of deceit can empower us to make more informed judgments and navigate our social world with greater awareness and insight. Remember, the goal is not to catch someone in a lie but to foster honest, transparent communication in all our interactions. Number 9. Strategic Use of Body Language. Influencing Outcomes in Negotiations and Interactions. The strategic use of body language in negotiations and interactions can significantly influence outcomes, turning the tide in your favor without the need for persuasive rhetoric. Body language, a powerful form of nonverbal communication, can convey confidence, openness, 
and sincerity, or it can reveal nervousness, deception, and defensiveness. Mastering this silent language allows you to subtly communicate your intentions and feelings, making it an invaluable tool in any interaction. Establishing presence. A confident posture is key to establishing presence in any negotiation or interaction. Standing or sitting straight with shoulders back and head held high, not only project confidence to others, but also boosts your own self-assurance. Such a posture commands attention and respect, setting a positive tone for the discussion. Mirroring for rapport. Mirroring. The subtle imitation of another person's body language can build rapport and foster a sense of empathy and of understanding. By reflecting the gestures, facial expressions or posture of the person you're interacting with, you signal alignment and agreement, creating a conducive atmosphere for negotiation. Eye contact for engagement. Maintaining appropriate eye contact signifies interest and engagement crucial in negotiations and interactions. It can convey sincerity and trustworthiness, encouraging openness from the other party. However, it's important to balance eye contact to avoid intimidating or discomforting others, especially in cultures where prolonged eye contact may be considered rude. Using gestures wisely. Purposeful gestures can emphasize points and express enthusiasm, making your communication more dynamic and persuasive. Open gestures like showing your palms indicate honesty and openness, while pointing or closed fists can appear aggressive. Using gestures to complement your verbal message can enhance your persuasiveness. Reading the room. Being attuned to the body language of others allows you to adjust your approach in real time. Recognizing signs of boredom, disagreement or confusion enables you to address concerns promptly and steer the conversation in a more favorable direction. Similarly, identifying positive cues like nodding or leaning in can encourage you to continue along the same vein. Controlling your emotional displays. Managing your reactions and expressions is crucial, especially in high-stakes negotiations. Keeping a calm and composed demeanor, even in the face of provocation, can give you an edge. It demonstrates control and patience, qualities that can sway outcomes in your favor. The strategic use of body language is not about manipulation, but about enhancing communication and understanding of interactions. By being mindful of your nonverbal cues and responsive to those of others, you can navigate negotiations and interactions more effectively, achieving desired outcomes with finesse and subtlety. This skill, like any other, requires practice and awareness, but can significantly impact your personal and professional success. In conclusion, harnessing the power of body language is a vital skill for success in personal and professional realms. It transcends mere communication, embodying the Stoic philosophy of understanding and controlling what lies within our power. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our own actions and reactions, a principle that aligns with the strategic use of body language. By mastering our nonverbal cues, we not only communicate more effectively but, but also gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and how we are perceived by others. Stoics emphasize living in harmony with the natural world, which includes the social environment we navigate daily. In this context, body language becomes a tool for embodying virtues such as wisdom, justice, courage and moderation. Wisdom in choosing the right nonverbal signals to convey our message clearly and respectfully, just as in reading others' body language with empathy and without prejudice, courage to maintain composure and confidence in challenging situation, and moderation in balancing assertiveness with approachability. Adopting a stoic approach to body language means being mindful of our expressions and gestures, ensuring they align with our inner virtues and intentions. It involves observing not just the responses of others, but also reflecting on our own reactions and adapting as necessary. This reflective practice not only enhances our interactions, but also contributes to personal growth and self-mastery. In essence, the strategic use of body language, informed by stoic wisdom, can lead to more meaningful connections, effective communication, and ultimately, success. It's a reminder that while we may not control external events, we can control our responses, including the silent yet powerful language of our bodies.